Hello everyone, I'm Daryl Heath with UALR College of Arts, Letters and Sciences. Welcome to the night sky. One of the most important resources to be found in any community across our nation is the public library. These venerable institutions operate under the guiding principle that information and knowledge should be made free and accessible to all who want it, no matter who they are. The advent of home computers, the internet, and new technologies such as smartphones and pads has radically changed how we all access information. And so too have libraries evolved to meet the changing needs of their patrons. And today's public libraries are much more than buildings that house books. Take the Central Arkansas Library System as an example of a modern day public library. Sure, you can still check out books here, but within its various branches, you'll find a wide array of services, programs, and media available to all its card-carrying patrons. And now, CALS has partnered with the Central Arkansas Astronomical Society with some generous funding provided by UALR's Arkansas Space Grant Consortium to bring library patrons a resource that can connect them to the universe itself, telescopes. Now, to be honest, CALS is not the first library to do this. In December of 2008, the New Hampshire Astronomical Society decided to place a few small telescopes in some of their local libraries with the modest hopes of fostering an interest in astronomy and perhaps generating some scientific literacy within their community. Long story short, the program was a huge hit with the libraries and their patrons, far surpassing the expectations of everyone involved. The libraries couldn't even keep up with the demand. Since then, there have been similar programs launched in other states and all have met with much success. In this program, I'd like to give you a little bit of a rundown on the telescope and a quick tutorial on how it works. This is the telescope that the New Hampshire Astronomical Society chose for their program. And since it's worked so well for them, CALS and the Central Arkansas Astronomical Society decided to follow their lead and stick to what's proven to work. Now, optical telescopes come in two very basic designs, but in essence, they all do the same things. Harvest light from distant objects and then focus that light into an image. The most recognizable type of telescope is known as a refractor. The first telescopes ever built back in 1608 was a refractor, and they are nothing more than a long tube with glass lenses for collecting light at one end and then focusing that light into an image at the opposite end. The second type of optical telescope, like this library telescope, is known as a reflector. Reflectors were first built in 1668 by Sir Isaac Newton, and rather than glass lenses, Newton chose to use mirrors to collect starlight. The primary mirror, the one responsible for collecting all of that starlight, is found at the bottom end of the tube, while the secondary mirror is located at the other and is placed at an angle. Its job is to reflect the image through an opening located on the side of the tube. This opening is where the eyepiece and then your eye would go. Okay, so this is the Orion Star Blaster 4.5 inch reflector telescope. It was selected out of all the other possible candidates because it's well made, it's lightweight, weighing about 17 pounds, so it's easily transported. It's sturdy, it's easy to use, and has fine optics. In short, it's an ideal scope for beginners, but don't let its small size fool you into thinking that it's a toy. It's not. It's a fine piece of optical equipment suitable for use by anyone of any age or level of experience. Before we go any further though, I want to emphasize a few very important things. Never use the scope to look directly at the sun, as this could cause permanent eye damage or even blindness. And while the scope is robust, never drop it. It's always a good idea to carry the scope by placing one hand onto the handle while using your other hand to support the base. When transporting the telescope, please buckle it in just like you would a person. This way, if you make any sudden stops, the telescope won't collide with another part of your car or with you or any of your passengers. Never insert or drop anything into the optical tube. Do not attempt to clean any of the optics, and that includes the eyepieces and mirrors. If any of the optics appear to be dirty, then please notify your librarian. Do not touch the eyepieces or mirrors. And finally, do not attempt to remove the casing for the mirror at the base of the telescope. Okay, 
Assuming that you've managed to chuck a telescope out from the library, how do you use it? The great thing about the Orion Star Blast is its portability and ease of use. You can store it easily in your vehicle and then drive to your favorite observing location, or you can just set it up in your backyard. For best results, I suggest setting it up on a sturdy tabletop such as a picnic table or even a card table if you have one. Once you've got it set up on a sturdy table, you might want to check and make sure that the tube is aligned for comfortable viewing. If you need to make any adjustments, just slightly loosen the tube clamp screw and then rotate the tube to your desired position. Before you start to observe, it's a good idea to let the telescope mirror acclimate to the outside temperature. Let it set outside with the tube cover removed for about 20 or 30 minutes. If you don't do this, then images in the scope will probably appear very blurry. Now, while adjusting the tube, you'll have no doubt noticed this feature. This is the finder, and it helps you to aim and point the telescope at the object that you want to look at, provided that it's in alignment. Now remember, you want to avoid bumping it while transporting or carrying the scope. So all you need to do is turn it on here. Looking up the tube, you'll see a red dot appear. Just swivel the telescope around until that red dot is aligned with your target. Now let's turn our attention to the eyepiece. These library telescopes have been outfitted with a zoom eyepiece that has four different focal lengths and a corresponding four levels of magnification. The focal length numbers are given in millimeters and include 24, 18, 12, and 8. The magnifications are 20 times with the 24 millimeter eyepiece, 27 with the 18 millimeter, 40 times with the 12 millimeter, and 60 times with the 8 millimeter. These offer you an array of choices that are best suited for this particular telescope. Now always begin your observations with the lowest magnification setting. And in this case, that's with the 24 millimeter eyepiece. The reason for this is that you'll be starting out with a wide field of view, thereby enabling you to find your target all the easier. Be aware that as you increase your magnification, you decrease the field of view, and objects once located will drift out of your field of view very quickly as the Earth rotates upon its axis. No matter which setting you use, you'll have to occasionally guide the scope by hand in order to compensate for this. Just gently nudge the tube in the desired direction. To change focal lengths and magnification settings, all you need to do is twist the eyepiece barrel so that you can align the setting you want with the white triangle. Now, each time you change the focal length and magnification, you'll also need to focus, and to do that, Turn either of these knurled wheels until the image resolves itself clearly. If you wear glasses, first try using them while looking in the eyepiece. You may discover that you don't need them. And folks with severe astigmatism often find that they get better views while wearing glasses. And that's pretty much it as far as operating the telescope goes. Now, what can you expect to see? Well, the moon and its rugged landscape of craters and mountains will look spectacular. The best time to view it will be when the moon is only partially illuminated, as opposed to a full moon. The reason for this is that when a full moon surface is entirely lit, much of the lunar topography looks dull and flat. However, when the moon is only partially lit, the sun's light, coming in at an oblique angle, makes many of the craters and peaks stand out with almost a 3D kind of relief. Looking at the moon as it goes through all of its phases will be very rewarding. With this telescope, you'll also be able to see the bands of Jupiter's upper atmosphere, as well as the planet's four largest moons. Saturn's beautiful rings will be viewable as well, and it's a stunning sight. You can also observe Venus in its various phases, but you'll not see any surface features, as the planet is always shrouded in clouds of sulfur dioxide laced with droplets of sulfuric acid. Venturing beyond the solar system, you'll be able to see a number of double stars, star clusters, nebulae, and even a few galaxies. Keep in mind that you'll need to escape the light pollution of the city in order to see many of these deep sky objects, and for the really faint objects, you'll also need to observe on a moonless night. And don't expect to see bright colors, like in the photos found in books and magazines. This isn't a fault of the scope 
but that of the human eye not being able to gather in as much light as the way a camera can. To find out more about astronomy, celestial objects, and how to locate them, I suggest perusing the bookshelves of your local library. Our website also has a list of a variety of resources to help the beginner stargazer. The Central Arkansas Astronomical Society will also maintain a page on their website with all kinds of information about the telescope as well as about the latest happenings in your night sky. If you are considering taking up astronomy as a hobby, then you'll want to consider visiting the Society's star parties or monthly club meetings. You'll find that you'll learn a lot more if you have an experienced stargazer as a mentor to help you get going. Your adventures in exploring the universe have only just begun, and with a library card and a telescope, you'll soon find yourself outside looking up in both awe and wonder.